I got invited to do this. They told me that they wanted something different. They asked me to do like a to deliver with you guys like a personal experience that changed my my life or something that uh, you cannot basically read on books or on coaching courses, something different. So I thought about, okay, let's try with my experience with um, with Libya. I was with Libya in the last African Cup of Nations to try to qualify for the World Cup. And it was a very, very interesting experience. So that is what basically I'm going to I'm going to 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 try to share with you guys, and then uh, hopefully it will be interesting for you. So here we have the team, and I will go about the context of these and objectives that we have for the for the competition, how the preparation went, the stuff that we had, the players, the training, the training program. I have no problem to share with you that, and then how the competition went for us and a post analysis that I can share with you uh, after what happened over there. So I don't know if you know, but Libya is there. It's, as you can see, it's a quite a big uh, country, but most of the country is a uh, desert. So there is four, four, main, um, four main cities. And if you see the population, it's not really big. So the country is not a country with a with huge population. It's about three million people, more four million people maximum in total, and so it's a, you know the number of players is, is also limited. Then, if we are talking about futsal, as you can see um, here, let me do this. So in two thousand, they finished third, and then they organized in two thousand and eight. The, the African Cup of Nations and they won it. So they have a, a quite good tradition um, in futsal. They participated, as you can see here, in um, two World Cups. So the, the country, we can say that it's a strong country um, in futsal. And when we when we had the this competition, the top three the top three teams from the from the competition they qualify. For the for the World Cup from Africa, so th there is three three spots from Africa that qualify to the to the World Cup. So that was actually one of the objectives for us. But I don't know if you know, but this is the contest that uh, we had. So Libya is in a in a civil in a civil war, and that is super important uh, in, in 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 our preparation basically. So what you are going to see now, okay, we were in the middle of the preparation and I don't know if you, if you know about this, but this is what happened the 4th of, of, of January. It was a military academy and they did an airstrike and 42 people uh, basically died. So we were in the middle of the preparation when, when this happened. Actually, I was, I, I, we were traveling when, when this happened, okay? So this is the contest that we had when we um, when we uh, took the job. Okay. So the objective for the for the Libya FA for the for the federation, the objective was to win the the total African uh, Futsal Cup of Nations. So th that was their objective. Then analyzing analyzing the reality, and if you check here the the ranking. There is two teams, Morocco and Egypt, that they are way ahead of the other ones. So if we are realistic and, and then and then we analyze everything in perspective, for us uh, as, a, as a staff, the objective was to finish in the top three to basically qualify for the World Cup. That, that, that was the real, the real objective. Morocco is actually number one, it's, it's, it's the current uh, champion. In Africa, and they have uh, fully professional players playing in, in first division in Italy, in France, and in Spain. And then Egypt, they finished in the top eight in the previous uh, World Cup, and ten players, ten players from that roster or from that uh, squad, they were all still playing for Egypt. So realistically, the objective was to finish in the top three. 
And the preparation that we had, it was two months, nothing less and nothing more. December and January. Super important, this, okay? And the preparation was not in Libya. So because of the civil war, and the preparation could not be in Libya. So all the preparation happened in Tunisia, in Morocco and Bahrain, okay? We have four friendly games, two in Morocco against clubs, and then we travel to arrange for, for, to play the national team over there. The roster, we had three goalkeepers and 13 players, so 16, and we had to pick 14. So we already, we, the federation gave us 16 players to pick 14 from, 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 from those. And then the head coach, Julio, Julio Fernandez, is a Spanish guy, and he's the guy who basically brought me uh, with him. So it was him and me, Spanish, all the other ones, every other member of the staff, they were Libyans. And the competition, this is super important too, the competition happened in Layun, which is, I don't know if you know, Layun is in the Western Sahara, and there is a political conflict with Morocco. And this is also quite important because it had some consequences. So that is the staff, mem the staff member. And as you can see, um, I, I speak English and then Julio speaks a bit, a bit of English and the physio speaks a bit of English, but everybody else, they only speak um, Arabic. So we have Salah, which is um, this guy here, that he has a very good Spanish and he was our interpreter. So as you can imagine, okay, we have an interpreter, but there is always a, co a, a communication problem there, or, or, or it's, it's, it's more challenging. So this is one thing that you should also need to understand. Then the players. So we have here the players. As, as I told you, we had 16 players during the training camp. We have three goalkeepers, and, and, and Fata is the goalkeeper number one by far. However, he had a red card from the previous round. So we knew that for the first game uh, in the African Cup of Nations, he was banned, he couldn't play. So that means that we have to bring the three goalkeepers to the, to the, to the tournament. Ahmed is a, is a kid here that is half Libyan, half Moroccan. And because of that, it's not really integrated into the into the team. I think he will be, and I think he's the future, but he was not really integrated. So it was almost the right decision to, to take him off. So he, he didn't travel to the main competition. And then we had Rida that is almost in the last in the last in the last years of, of his career. So actually Julio and me as coaches, we didn't really had the options to pick uh, players. The, 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 the team selected selected by its, itself, basically. Those the, the, the 14 players that travel to, to Morocco to the competition. Then, and this is the, the this is here the in December when we met. So the first thing is we met here to sign the contracts and everything was in Tunisia because you know the situation in Libya. Then the players, they travel from uh, Libya to Tunisia um, the day after, and we met them. And then the day after, on the 11th of December, we went to Morocco. We went to Morocco and we already had problems with the, um, with the, with the visas. So it was a super, super, you know, a long journey and then the airports we, we checking everything so we already had problems there we are we traveled to Casablanca and from Casablanca to a city um, called Kenitra however on the 14th we had to change and you will see later on the map from Kenitra we traveled to Tangier in the very north of Morocco because the because the conditions in Kenitra they were not the best ones. Also, until that day, because of the visa problems, we couldn't have our interpreter. So all these days we we we, we didn't have interpreter and there is basically no English at all 
there. So the communication was like super broken and, and we already practiced three days, okay? Then as you can see, we had our friendly game here that the Federation agreed and another friendly game here that the Federation agreed just a week into the job and we keep practicing until the 23rd. On the 24th, on Christmas Day, we left. We left Morocco, so the players, they traveled back to Libya and Julio and myself, we traveled back to Spain basically for the Christmas period. We gave uh, some days off to the players, but at the same time, because most of the players, they are from two, three cities that I mentioned before. We gave them some uh, programs and the, the, the staff members work in groups of four or five players during some of those days during the Christmas period because they don't celebrate, they don't celebrate uh, Christmas at all. Then you can see this is the court that when we went in Kenitra and you see the corner, this is the corner. So that is the, one of the reasons because we move from Kenitra to Tangier. That is like four or five hours um, on the bus because the conditions, they were not good. So here you have Morocco and you can see, so we travel from Tunisia into Casablanca. Then we went to Kenitra. We stayed three days, then we travel to Tangier. But then if you check, the competition is at the very, very south here, at the very, very south, okay? So we have been traveling a lot already and only in our preparation. Then we met on the on the 1st of January, we were traveling. So I traveled, to, I traveled from Madrid and then we arrived to Tunisia on the second. And the plan was to train four days in January in Tunisia and then travel to Bahrain. At the end, talking to the Federation, we changed. And the Sunday, we traveled that Sunday to Bahrain. So that we, we had a bit of more time there to prepare basically for the, for the games and, and some time um, to rest. From Tunisia, we traveled to United Arab Emirates and then from there to Bahrain. But we arrived to United Emirates Arab at 11 p.m. and the next flight was at eight o'clock in the morning. So that is nine hours overnight waiting at the airport. Just 24 hours basically before Again, we were waiting on an airport nine hours overnight. We already also had problems with the visas. And one player couldn't travel on the fifth. That player had to travel on the sixth, but with the same itinerary that we had. So that player almost missed that game. Well, he arrived, but he played very little because he has been traveling like with... And now you probably you are thinking, yeah, but why the problems with the visa? So I will explain later, okay? We played those two games and then we came back. We came back for a training camp. We left Bahrain and we went back to Tunisia. We stayed in Tunisia training there. And then on the 21st, on the 21st of January, we traveled from Tunisia to Morocco or, or to the Western Sahara where the competition was going to uh, take place. For our first game on the 28th, we play Morocco on the, on the 28th, we play Mauritius on the 30th. In training camps, basically, we had 49 sessions. And then in Morocco, we had the third game against, uh, against Guinea and then semifinals and semifinals and potentially the final or the third uh, and fourth position game in Morocco, we did 14 training sessions. So in total, we have 49 plus um, 14 plus the four friendly games that we had. That was basically the preparation that we have for the um, for the tournament. Um, the friendly games you we play against against a regional selection. We won for 5-4. Then we play against the North Maghreb uh, regional selection 5-3, and then we play. 
in Bahrain, the two games, it was 1-1 one, one and 2-3. So as you see, all the games they have been very, very, very tight games. And basically here you can see Africa and you can see that those blue things are the three main cities, Misrata, Tripoli and Benghazi from Libya, where most of our players, they came from there. We have uh, Tunisia here, and then our trade. So we always met the players here, which is the capital, but then the training sessions, they were here in Monastir. Then we have Tanger here. We have Casablanca, that all the flights, they had to go from here to Casablanca, and then we have Layun here. And in between, we have here Bahrain. So as you can see, in, in just two months of preparation, it was a lot of traveling that have a lot of time on airports, a lot of uh, time differences change. So something that if we analyze now, I don't think is the best uh, to prepare uh, a team. Then a competition, as I mentioned before, it was in, in La Union, in the Western Sahara. And there is a political uh, conflict over there since Spain left the Sahara in 1975. And there is kind of a war also. And before, so the competition was going to be this one. Okay. I don't know if you pick before, but I mentioned that we play Mauritius. But if you see the group A is Morocco, Libya, Equatorial Guinea, and South Africa. The problem is some countries that you can see here, some, some, some countries support Morocco in being basically the owner of the Western Sahara. Other countries, they don't, they don't uh, support that and then they maintain good relationship or diplomatic relationship with the, with the Sahrawi Republic. So with that in mind, the competition was behind doors, so the whole competition we had public, we, we, we had people attending the games, every game I think it was a thousand people over there, but nobody could buy tickets, so those people basically, they, they were giving the tickets and they knew who was coming, nobody from outside was going to the competition, so my family traveled, my, my family traveled and it was uh, very difficult for them to, to get uh, passes because they check everything, they check background. So basically it was like a private competition, which I, I don't think is good for futsal because you are not developing anything. No kids from the, from the town in, into the hall. And more important on the, uh, because South Africa as a country support the, the Sahrawi Republic and not the Morocco government on the 15th of January, South Africa was forced to withdraw the competition and they had to put just two weeks, three weeks before the competition started, they had to put Mauritius in our group rather than South Africa. Okay. So our first game, it was against Morocco, top team. Um, then on, uh, we lost 0-3, uh, it was 0-1 at uh, half time, but Nothing, um, nothing that, to be honest, I think we played very well, they were, they were better than us, so it's something that we expected. Then the second game was against Mauritius, but just when we are leaving the hotel, just when, when we are leaving the hotel, so one hour, 30 minutes, one hour, 40 minutes, 45 minutes before kickoff, we were told that Mauritius was forced after playing, they played the first, the first game. After playing the first game, Mauritius was forced to withdraw the competition because of this political um, relationship. So the game was cancelled and we were given a 3-0 win without even playing. We had to go to the facility. We had to do even the warm-up, everything for the television. But we knew that we were not going to play like just one hour, one hour, 15 minutes before the game. Everything was confirmed. So then we had to play uh, Equatorial Guinea, like in the last game of the group, as, I, as we expected. That was going to be 
where um, we we qualify or we don't qualify for the next uh, round. And the game was very tight, and at the end we we won two one. So we qualify as second in the group. Everything as uh, we plan basically. We plan Morocco is going to win the group. Libya will finish second, and then in the other group, Angola will finish second, and Egypt will win uh, the other group. So then, in the semi-final, because the top two teams from each group qualify in the semi-final, we expected to play Egypt, and in the other semi-final, before even the, the competition, we expected to be Angola uh, Morocco. So everything so far came to plan. So we have here the semi-finals and we have to play, we have to play basically um, Egypt on the on the semi-final. It was very uh, very very tight game. It was one one a half time, but at the end we lost two five. So we lost two five, um, which means we are not out of the World Cup because remember the top three teams they qualify. So we have one more game to play. We have to play one game versus the loser from the other semi-final. And of course, uh, Angola lost. So Morocco qualified to play Egypt in the final. And then we had to play on the same day, just before um, the, the third and fourth position game between, uh, between Libya and Angola. Of course, the political relationship also between Egypt and Libya is not really great. Um, so after this loss, the whole federation came to the hotel basically to, to talk to the manager, to talk to Julio, to talk to the players, to put some pressure there. So something that, of course, now you can see that it's not ideal, but this is the thing that you have to deal with. So we are getting ready for the for the third and fourth position, that, that is what Julio and I expected. And that was basically, we were in the position that uh, we were in the position that we wanted to be. The day that we had the, 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 the third and fourth position game, also the president of the federation came to talk to the players after our scouting, uh, scouting meeting to, to also put some pressure on the players and saying that the whole country is behind them and blah, 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 blah. And then we played the game and we lost. It was a one zero a half, half time. And then we put, we put the flying goalkeeper and we lost zero two. So basically we are out of the World Cup and Angola qualify. And it was, it was tough and it was of course a disaster. We have to admit that. If then we analyze everything and if we do two analyses, one about futsal and the other one about um, basically the, the, the federation itself, okay, the, 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 the organization aspects, um, we, need, we need better courts, better facilities, better equipment, better uh, travel uh, arrangements and itineraries. But of course, it's very difficult to organize all this when um, you are abroad for two months. So you are not, you are not um, in your country. You are not in your, in your headquarters like Morocco. They have been training in, in, the, in the Federation headquarters for three months. When basically you are you are traveling, you have to carry your equipment. That is one. Then the second one. Every time that you have to organize something, it should be through the federation. But the federation is in, is, is in Tripoli, so you have to contact them. And because of the war, and uh, because of the war, it was so many times that in Tripoli at the federation building they had uh, power outages. So they lost electricity. That means that there is no computers, there is no internet, there is nothing. So maybe you are you are asking to chain a flight and to chain the flight, um, you spend two days 
to change the flight and then it's too late or or it's too expensive or so because that is the situation that there is back in the country okay then of course we, we, we need we need somebody that as you saw there is no secretary or there is no there is there was not a person dealing with all the visas and all the uh, CAF uh, procedures and registration. So it was a lot of admin, a lot of work admin that we had to do as coaches also there because we didn't have that support because of the of, of the of the situation in the country. We are traveling abroad and we are traveling on those conditions, but we had very very limited options to to basically do the camp so we try through contacts we try to do camps in spain with the federation we i try to do contacts in Bar uh, camps with contacts in barcelona julio tried to do the training camps in italy but there is one huge problem most of those governments they don't issue visas to Libyan people. So they, we couldn't travel because the players, they couldn't get the visas because those governments are afraid that the players, after they are in Spain, in Italy, in UK, because of the situation in the country, they, 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 they stay. So basically at the end, the whole preparation, Morocco, Tunisia and Bahrain, we went there because those countries basically gave us the, the visas to go there. It's not because we decided to go there, it's because that was the options that basically um, we had. Then for me, there is there is one key aspect that for, for the players it was, it was difficult, okay? And it's this. They spent almost two months away from home with the families back in the in the country with a, with a war so imagine that you have your wife and you have your kids in a war and you are two months uh, away from so i think that was too much too, that was too much too much to take for for the players and at the end of that um at the end of that uh, period some of the players we had some problems um, some problems with them with them but so uh, our our goalkeeper coach for example when we were going to travel to Bahrain the goalkeeper coach uh, couldn't uh, couldn't travel the goalkeeper coach had to come back to Libya because basically the war was getting close to uh, his house so he came back to Libya basically to find another house for his wife and his daughters. He spent a week and then he came back. After that situation, he came back with the team. Um, so in those in those circumstances, I really think that we we, we needed the support of a team um, psychologist that of course we didn't have. And then in the competition. In the competition, when, when we were basically in the last in the last three games of the competition, so Equatorial Guinea, Egypt, and Angola, one of the main players, the team captain, basically um, had a situation, a personal situation that a family member, a family member was killed in Libya, and and, and, and the guys in the middle of the competition thinking about what happened in Libya and also he needs to compete. So I really think that a, a, a psychologist was needed. And of course, we didn't we didn't have that um, support. And then also a team doctor, uh, a team doctor uh, was needed. We didn't have we didn't have a team doctor. We have a, we had a physiotherapist. We had injuries. And every time that we had an injury, um, every time that we had an injury, we had to take the player to clinics. So the Libya Federation, they have uh, partnerships or agreements with several clinics, clinics in Morocco or in Tunisia. So we had to take the player, the injured players to the clinics in Tunisia or Morocco. But it's not the same as having a team doctor with you in the hotel or a team doctor with you in the team 24 hours.
it's, it's, it's not the same. So we had this kind, in my opinion, uh, organizational uh, deficits. And then if we go into futsal, of course, and we need a longer preparation. You cannot, you cannot uh, prepare properly a national team to compete um, for a place on the World Cup just with two months. And before that, they have not been doing anything together for four for four years because the last one it was the previous the previous African Cup of Nations in South Africa, in South Africa in twenty uh, in twenty sixteen. Then, of course, they need a futsal league. They they need regional centers of excellence in the country. But I think that is very obvious. In when you are in the middle of a war. The less to think is about a futsal program. So I think that is very interesting. Is uh, also we would like to have uh, more players to choose from, but to choose the players, you have to go to the country, and we couldn't go to the country. So the the squad was very limited, and I think a pool of players or a deeper or a deeper group of players could be beneficial and younger ones because we had players that they are almost so the, the, last year was the last chance to participate in a World Cup for them so we, we have players that uh, there is no really really future now into into the program if we have a longer period if we have a longer period of course we need to play more friendly games because we didn't have enough but at the same time we didn't have time and then Purely about about playing, we had a problem scoring goals. We had a, a, a really problem scoring goals during the competition. We only scored uh, four goals, and out of those four goals, we didn't score a single goal in open play. As you can see here, we score one corner set piece, one free kick uh, set piece. We score one uh, 10 meters a penalty at the very very end of a game with five seconds to go. So, and then we score one goal when we were defending power play, and we we stole the ball and we score into an empty net without even a goalkeeper. So we had a problem scoring goals, and we knew that, but we couldn't fix it as coaches. And that is basically, in my opinion, what um, limited our chances to to basically to qualify. And then just to finish before the questions, this is the group of players. It was a fantastic group of players. I didn't want to the situation in the country back back there. Uh, I think now one year one year after um, has improved a lot, but. It was a civil war, okay? So uh, I didn't mention that before, but it was a civil war. And because it was a civil war, basically it was Libyan fighting versus Libyan. And of course, in the team, in the team, we had very good group of players, unbelievable. Uh, I, I love Ben Orlan. I still have contacts with them, but we had players that they are supporting one side and we have players that they are supporting the other side. So this is something very interesting. And... Honestly, I know that because um, I know that because the um, Sala, the interpreter, told us, and then after two months, oh, this guy is from is supporting this side. This guy is supporting the other one. But we never, honestly, we never could guess anything during the during the during our period together. So when everybody knew, but. Everybody worked together. It was no conflicts between between them. It was one group. It was everybody was super super close. So the team the team was um, together. That was amazing. And also we felt that we had a lot of support uh, back from the country and to every single country that we travel. So when we were in Morocco, when we were in Tunisia, when we were in uh, in Bahrain. Every single one was supporting us. Honestly, that was like it was something super special to feel 
how everybody is supporting us and how everybody was supporting these kids because they knew what um, was going on back in the country and they knew uh, how much they, they they were suffering because it was you know it was two two months staying away from your families when the situation back there is not uh, great so you know if you have any question and uh, i am now happy to help you and to answer and if you want to contact me or ask me anything privately because uh, because um, you feel that way here you have my uh, contact details so now and open um, to any uh, to any question